I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me. I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide Will now you decide to now follow Jesus? To follow Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Monday of the 13th week. It was great this weekend. Uh, we had Mass outside. Uh, we had Mass inside. It was a great weekend, I think, at Mass. And I was very, very grateful to everybody that did a lot of work to help that out. And secondly, I was up at um, the 100th anniversary of St. John the Evangelist in Altoona, my former parish. And I got a chance to talk to a number of the people in the parish there. And um, a couple of them said they watch us on Liturgy of the Word. So maybe they're watching us right now. So I just want to say I had a great time to yesterday uh, up at our mother, up, up at, at St. John's in, in Altoona. And, and, and congratulations on your 100th anniversary. And it was good to talk to so many people of my former parish. And I miss all of you very, very much. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's the feast of St. Cyril of Alexandria. We go back to the 300s, and uh, the, the archbishop or the patriarch of Constantinople was a man by the name of Nestorius, who was the beginning of the Nestorian heresy. Nestorianism is a heresy where they believe that Jesus had two was two persons, not one person. We believe Jesus is one person, two natures. Nestorius believed Jesus was two persons, and Mary was the son, was the mother of the human Jesus, not the divine Jesus. And then the Council of Ephesus in 431 decided all this and said, Mary is mother of God, meaning Jesus is one person, two natures. And I don't want to get into the weeds more than that. But St. Cyril of Alexandria was the champion of orthodoxy against the patriarch, very powerful person of Constantinople, which would be Nestorius. So, Let's begin. Let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Your Son of God, Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Cyril of Alexandria an invincible champion of the divine motherhood of the most blessed Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who believe that she was truly the mother of God may be saved by the incarnation of Christ, her Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Amos. Thus says the Lord, for three crimes of Israel and for four, four, I will not revoke my word, because they sell the just man for silver and the poor man for a pair of sandals. They trample the heads of the weak into the dust of the earth and force the lowly out of the way. Son and father go to the same prostitute, profaning my holy name. Upon garments taken in pledge, they recline beside any altar, and the wine of those who have been fined, they drink in the house of their God. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorites before them, who were as tall as the cedars and as strong as the oak trees. I destroy their fruit above and their roots beneath. It was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and who led you through the desert for 40 years to occupy the land of the Amorites. Beware, I will crush you into the ground as a wagon crushes the laden with sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift and the strong man shall not retain his strength. The warrior warrior shall not save his life, nor the bowman stand his ground. The swift of the foot shall not escape, nor the horseman save his life. And the most stout hearted of warriors shall flee naked on that day, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Offer to the sacrifice of Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? When you see a thief, you keep pace with him, and with adulterers you throw in your lot. To your mouth you give free rein for evil, you harness your tongue to deceive. brother. Against your mother's son you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I'm like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. Consider this, you forget God, lest I rend you, and there be no one to rescue you. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other shore. A scribe approached him and said, Peter, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said, Foxes have dens, birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, let me go bury my father first. And Jesus answered him, Follow me. Let the dead bury their dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So where have you heard that gospel before? But this is Matthew's version 
And yesterday we uh, got Luke's version of all this. And today it gives me a chance to say some things about that that I couldn't say yesterday. Because I, I, I look at uh, what we do here in Liturgy of the Word and in Daily Mass a little differently than what we do on Sundays. So, first of all, let me say, I've, I've said it over and over again, context and knowing a context of a text is really, really important. If sometimes you read a, 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 a reading in isolation, you kind of miss a lot with what's really going on. So, it's important we know the culture. It's important we know the history. It's important that we know the time of a reading. And today's gospel is exactly like all of that. Um, when we know the culture, when we know the history, we know the time, all of a sudden we go, oh, that's what Jesus is saying in all of this. And so I want to make three quick points about the gospel here today that I couldn't say yesterday, which are kind of affiliated. Well, two of them are anyway. And uh, I want to say here to you all today. Number one, Jesus says, see, it says, he sees the crowd and says, let's go to the other side. Why does he do that? It looks like he's trying to run away from the people. Well, he's not. What he's doing is he's seeing the crowd come at, why were the crowd coming at him? Because they were getting stuff. They were getting food. They were getting things they wanted. And at a certain point, that's fine. At a certain point, that's good. They're getting healing and that's good. But then he wanted to determine whether they really wanted to follow because the food, the multiplication, and the healings are all meant to point to the kingdom. He wanted to make sure, he wanted to make sure all the time that we did point to the kingdom. So he wanted to go to the other side, which is Gentile territory. They wouldn't follow him so much there because they wanted stuff. But anyway, number one. Number two, a scribe approaches Jesus and calls Jesus teacher. Now that, in Matthew's gospel, that's code. When someone calls Jesus teacher, that's an unbeliever. So this person is an unbeliever. So he's trying to kind of uh, trick Jesus in a way or, or, or try to catch him in something in some fashion. He's not really genuinely asking Jesus to be a disciple or to be a follower. So what Jesus says to him, kind of like putting him in his place and kind of like right between the eyes, he's saying to him that to be a disciple is a radical change. You have to radically change your life to be a follower of Jesus Christ. This is not your hobby. This is something we do and for the very core of our beings. We are followers of Jesus Christ, not just something we do on Sundays or for an hour every once in a while here and there. So he's trying to make sure that, that this scribe got his priority straight. And then the third one, the man wants to delay discipleship by burying his father. Now, folks, you and I are thinking Jesus is being really insensitive here because this guy has to go bury his father, but his father's fine. Now, and part of that tradition was a son had to uh, be available to bury his father. Now, his father is just fine. His father's going to die 20, 30 years from now. He's not going to die tomorrow. And he's putting off discipleship until he buries his father for whatever reason. It's a way to delay things in your life. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm not buying any of this. Follow me now. If you really want to be a follower, follow me now. So number one, who's a true disciple? Number two, discipleship isn't just being in church, but it's a radical change in lifestyle. And number three, discipleship is now. It's not later. Okay? A couple things to explain that hopefully make sense of the gospel tomorrow, yesterday, excuse me, and the gospel today. Here's my questions for today. Can you identify with any of these three points I just shared with all of you? And which one or which ones? God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you once again tomorrow in this beautiful summer weather. And we're grateful to be able to talk to you today. And thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.